Good afternoon. This webinar will start momentarily. If you experience any technical issues, please try, please try logging out and logging back in. If we experience any technical issues, please give us five to 10 minutes for a resolution. Again, this webinar will start momentarily. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kim Hayes, CFP Professional and Director of Corporate Relations here at CFP Board. I am happy to welcome all of you to the Strategies for Studying for the CFP Exam webinar. This is an exciting time on your path to CFP certification. I've been there and know it can seem daunting, but stick with it. Completing the education and the exam requirements truly do take a lot of time and energy, but earning your CFP certification can be one of the defining achievements of your career. Today we'll hear from Otto Rivera, CFP professional, Matt Gorin, CFP professional, and Michelle Welch, CFP professional. In fact, it is my understanding she became a CFP professional just today. So congratulations, Michelle. These Thank you so much. <laughs> sure. These wonderful panelists have agreed to share with us how they studied for their CFP exam and the strategies they, they employed. We'll touch on what they did to stay on track with studying and manage, managing their time effectively how they managed all of those outside obligations that we all have and stuck to their study plan. Um, so thank you to each of you for agreeing to speak with us today. My colleague, Amanda Zapata, Manager of Marketing here at CFP Board will also help moderate this webinar. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature on the webinar to post them. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Amanda. Thanks, Kim. I'd like to transition now to Otto, Michelle, and Matt to discuss how they studied. Let's start with Otto. Otto, you have successfully passed the CFP exam. You are a CFP professional. What is your biggest study tip when studying for the CFP exam? Sure, thank you for having me. Um, and hi to everyone, wherever you are, you're doing something great um, by preparing for the CFP. This is such a great achievement. So stick with the process and, you know, I wish you all the best. Um, for me personally, time is the one of the most important things. And I guess my biggest tip would be to be as intentional and systematic as possible with your time. Um, we are 76 days away from the start of the new exam window. Time does not spare anyone and it's up to you who are listening um, to this webinar to look at your calendar and take control of it. This is the moment to start prioritizing and to start saying no to other things, including, unfortunately, social gatherings, some, um, some family time, and even um, client meetings and some job meetings and responsibilities. Talk to your family, talk to your boss, talk to your peers, and enlist them to help you conclude um, this CFP journey. Um, passing the CFP will require that you build a, a rhythm of knowledge, of logic, of decision making. It, I see it kind of, you know, I love classical music and like you, you know that classical music, music sometimes starts so slow and low and then progressively rises up to you know the highest node which is called a crescendo that is the way i see the process of a successful cfp certificate right you're gonna you have 76 days um you need to start slow and then progressively increase your study time um, um increase you know the the depth you go into the material and you know, and really get to that peak, to that point, um, really close to the exam. Um, you still have time. Just get organized. Use the seventy-six days to build that melody up, and so by the time the exam arrives, you'll be ready to go. That's um, definitely one of my biggest tips for for the certificates. That that's great, Otto. I you know I think that's really helpful to kind of put into perspective of you know, there's a timeline and kind of, you know, keep following that. 
did you face any challenges when you were studying? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Um, Time-wise, you know, I am a, a full-time financial planner and investment advisor with a firm that has clients in five continents. So my hours can be from early mornings to late nights. Um, I'm also a husband, a father of a beautiful six-year-old girl that has special needs and, and that I devote a lot of my time with her um, for her care. Um, and we also have a dog. So yeah, I, I am a very busy guy and, and was a busy guy, um, you know, all the time that I spent preparing for the exam. Um, I also had challenges with my approach. You know, I, I ha had a hard time tackling some concepts I, that I found confusing and intimidating, like for example, calculator, um, formulas, um, some of the investment management um, calculations. Um, you know, I was continually, um, continually tempted to study um, concepts that I already understood and, and knew. And a lot of you are going to um, be tempted the same way in this process, but I will highly encourage you to, to not do it. You really need to tackle the subjects that are challenging to you, the subjects that you find difficult. Just grab the, the bull by the horns and and, you know, little by little start addressing them. And you will discover, as I did, that, you know, sometimes they're not even that difficult. It's just all that you're, you know, you're just fearing the appearance of it and not the, the subject itself. Um, in, in terms of morale, I had challenges also, you know, it, you know, every day it was a challenge to stay positive and focus. I, you know, I was highly motivated to study and pass, but, you know, I, definitely got discouraged discouraged when after studying I got low scores in you know in questions and practice exams um, do not let the low scores get to you they, they are just practice and they will help you address you know your weaknesses and develop your approach so yeah I definitely had my challenges yeah, I mean, it sounds like you definitely had a, a plan put together, though, to, to help you overcome that. And like you say, you had family obligations, work obligations, and but kept going through it all. So along those lines, what worked for you when you were putting together your study plan? Do you have any suggestions for an effective study plan or maybe things to uh, avoid or make sure you're really adding in? Sure, sure. So, you know, I schedule specific time to study. Um, for every week, right? And life can be chaotic and things can change, but I try to stay as, um, I try to be as firm with that commitment as possible. Um, you know, I had specific time slots to study. Uh, and I, I, in addition, I look for free time um, throughout the day to, you know, just add some additional time to study. I really maximize every minute that I had. Um, I you know, um, I did question bank questions as I gave breakfast and dinner to my to my um, daughter. I took advantage when I was alone in the house, which is also my office. I work from home. And even when I was commuting, um, you know, to different places, I took that time to just put my um, headphones um, in air or AirPods and, and listen to um, some study cards that I had recorded on my iPhone. I did early mornings, I did late nights, I did midday, um, it, whatever work um, for that week I did. Um, I definitely coordinated study hours with my wife so she can take care of the little girl. And I also talked to my boss and let him and coordinated with him. He was very gracious and allowed me to um, study during some work hours, so that was great. Um, I also took time off um, before the exam um, in different slots. So um, be, um, please do not think that you will be able to tackle this exam by just taking the prior two weeks to your exam date off and just you know ram, ram everything through. It's not going to work. You need to build the melody. You need to build the pace. Um, throughout these um, last 76 days. So yeah, that's some of the ways I, I, I tackle my studying. That's great. 
Yeah. And did you have, and, and it sounds like, like it, but did you have like a written plan that you had, you know, drawn out or maybe not written, but, you know, using some sort of software program, but you had, did you have something that mapped out what you were going to follow? Yeah, I, I had, so um, just to make sure, just to make sure I didn't have conflicts at work, I added, um, you know, time slots to my Google calendar. I also had um, my little written plan on a notebook, um, just dividing the different subjects or things that I wanted to address, um, and, you know, by time slot, by um, by day. Um, I, you know, of course, this took weekends. You know, um, during the week it was difficult, but then the weekends, you know, I had plenty of more time to allocate to different subjects. So, um, yeah, I, I wrote everything down, um, put it on my Google Calendar. I had reminders. I actually had a, a there's a Windows reminder that it's a countdown. It will let you know how many days you have left until the exam, right, or or a specific day. So. I programmed that um, with my exam date, and basically that helped me always um, have a sense of urgency, right? I think sometimes we, you know, we just lose track of time, track of days. Um, but if we can keep that in front of us, it will give us that additional motivation or additional push, if you may. Um, to keep going on and really, you know, maximizing time uh, as, as much as possible. Yeah, kind of keep it as a challenge to yourself to keep going and <laughs> and know what you're working towards. Yeah, absolutely. Um, out of what resources did you incorporate into your studying? Did you use a review course, practice exams, question banks, flashcards, or, or anything else? Sure. So, you know, I truly believe a review course is a must, even for retakers. Uh, you know, in my case, I was a retaker. I failed on my first try at the, C at the, C to the CFP exam. Um, so I took a second, um, you know, review. Um, and it actually, you know, well, it's not a funny story, but just, just to let you know, because it's real life. I actually took the review three times because I originally... I passed the CFP in March, uh, in the March cycle. Uh, I was already going, going to test in December, uh, I'm sorry, in November. Um, and I was getting ready to it and I, for it, and I took the review for November. And then I had um, a brother of mine pass away 10 days before the exam, and I had to reschedule. So I ended up, you know, in CFP on board and actually my provider um, for the for the review course, which was Brett Danko, you know, um, both very graciously just rescheduled me. And I actually ended up taking three review courses with Brett Danko. Um, so that was really helpful. Um, uh, it's just a must. So a, re a review course is definitely a must. Um, I use the Danko, um, question bank, but in addition to that, I also purchased the Dalton one that has 2000 plus questions. So it is a great resource. You can actually um, buy it separately from their um, review package. That's what I did. I got um, review cards from Red Denko, um, but I also created my own flashcards. So I just bought a bunch of flashcards and I started writing things there. Um, I read aloud um, the material. It, it, it helped me because my learning star, style is more of auditory. Um, and I wrote the material many times over. That's something that is so key, in my opinion. Just writing things down just helps you memorize them, understand them. Um, it, it's just a way of your brain to record it um, for, for a, a long time. I also use, of course, the CFP practice exams that are, are, are given, um, the, the written materials that the CFP does send you um, every so often. Um, I review, uh, you know, they provide those for free and I use those. As I said before, I created also my um, study audio cards, which I recorded on my iPhone using a, the voice memo app. I just, just started reading, um, you know, cards, and then just um, listening to them in my commute or while I exercised. Um, 
I also got an exam coach for the, for the second try. It really helped me with my mindset and, and really to the science strategy for the exam. Um, and also, um, and, you know, this is very important also, you know, I improved my diet. I started exercising um, for the exam and I had, you know, appropriate rest at night, good sleep. And that will definitely, you know, make a difference in the day of the exam. That's some really great insight and advice there, you know, just kind of holistically keeping track of everything that you needed to do personally, you know, and and for studying, just really, you know, every you can't just isolate one thing to help you study. It's, you know, everything put together. Correct. That's correct. Right. Well, we really appreciate your insight and sharing your experience there. Um, I will definitely come back. I'm sure, I think there are a couple of questions for you. We'll make sure uh, we ask those towards the end here. But I want to switch over to Michelle now and ask you similar questions about your experience studying for the exam. Um, so Michelle, you know, what was what is your biggest tip when studying for the exam? You you recently took the exam, so I'd love to know, you know, based on your experience, what you know what you really found was helpful. Yeah, sure. So, uh, so thank you for for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here, and and I truly hope that my personal experience will help others. You know, whether you're taking it, you know, for the first time um, or the second time, like myself. <laughs> so I'm with you there, Otto, uh, and maybe you can avoid some of the mistakes that that I've made. Um, I would say as soon as you can evaluate which topics you struggle with, um, you know, that are also weighted heavily on the exam to spend more time in those, those areas. So I know Otto had um, mentioned that as well. So really focusing a lot of your time in those areas that are really uh, difficult. Uh, for example, for me, you know, I struggled with income tax planning, retirement planning, and estate. So those were the three areas that I struggled with the most. So I spent a lot of time not only understanding the concepts, but getting proficient in doing calculations in those areas. So, for example, um, how to calculate NUAs, uh, ISOs, non-qualified stock options, like kind exchanges. Um, how, how to calculate income tax formula. So the list was long for me, but I felt the, the more proficient I became in those areas, the more confidence I gained and doing lots and lots of Quebec questions. I can't uh, stress enough how important it is to do those quizzes. Um, I think the more questions you can do, the more exposed you'll be, able, you'll be to different ways of questions may be asked on exam regarding a, a given topic. So I think, yeah, the biggest study tip is just understand where you're struggling with and just really focus a lot of your time in those areas and the, and the quizzes, doing the quizzes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's great advice. And definitely for sure, you know, early on figuring out where you may want to focus some additional time and effort and, and make sure you have those resources available. Michelle, related to that, how did you figure out or how did you evaluate what where your gaps were? Did you have a tool? Did you use a practice exam? You know, how did you kind of um, do that? Well, I, mean, I, I used everything that was available to me through the, uh, I use Dalton. Um, so the, the quizzes, the practice exams, um, just by doing those particular things, I was able to see where I was scoring high in, where I was scoring low in. Um, and then I was able to gear myself towards um, where I should spend most of my time. And, you know, it, it was a process. It wasn't right away. Like, obviously, you don't know where you stand initially. You have to kind of go through um, all the materials and the, and the guidebooks and the, and the videos and all that to see and start testing to see where you stand. But once you do, you can start narrowing down your time and, and focusing on those, those specific areas. That's great. That makes a lot of sense. You utilize materials you have to, you know, do the do what you need in order to make that evaluation and and continue studying on at the same time. Mm -hmm. Did you face any challenges when you were studying for the exam? Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, there there were definitely several challenges. However, I would say the biggest challenge that comes to mind was uh, finding time to study. 
you know, I'm a, a single working mom, you know, so it was a struggle having to work full time, maintain a home for, for me and the kids um, and all that entails and having the, the time and the physical and mental energy, you know, to get like auto, to get up early, to stay up late day after day uh, to get the work done. Uh, it, it takes a lot of grit. And um, I had to constantly remind myself why I was doing what I'm doing to keep myself focused on continuing to move forward. You know, I, I know it sounds cheesy and you're, you're probably, you've probably heard this a thousand times, but knowing why you want those letters behind your name and all the hard work is going to take together is so important because there will be times when you're going to want to give up or you're going to second guess your decision and your reasons for sticking it out will will keep um things um going forward yeah that's great and that's great right keep keep going just keep you know stick with it you may face some some downward spikes but you're always going to you know have something else that brings you back up uh, so stick with it and that, that's really great how did you manage your time between your work life, personal life, and other obligations to also fit in studying, you know, similar to what I had asked Otto about a study plan. Did you have a study plan? Did you talk to your employer, to your family for childcare? How, how did you manage all of those obligations and also manage the, the your study plan? Yeah. So, um, you know, like I said before, you know, this was the second time I took the test and then, um, there were multiple reasons that led to this result. Um, initially, I didn't keep a, a study, a set study schedule. You know, I was way more reactive than proactive. Um, you know, I, I was studying when I had the time rather than scheduling my time. So uh, same thing with my personal activities, you know, but after not being successful the first time around, I committed to consistently studying every day and make sure that I put everything, and like I'll put everything in my calendar, my Google calendar, um, even the, the most mundane things like blocking time for grocery shopping, um, but at the same time, allowing some wiggle room between events for things that came up, which um, seemed to always happen, you know, especially you know, when you have kids. Um, if something came up that I had to address, I would just make up time on the weekends, um, I know it sounds very tedious, but it was really helpful in keeping me organized and focused uh, and make sure to keep, uh, you know, I would say a fairly good pace with my studies, but didn't overwork myself to the point where, where I felt overwhelmed or burnt out. Like, you know, I did the first time around. Uh, I was way more selective with family events, you know, you know, what to say yes to, what to say no to, you know, which is, of course, it's difficult when you have kids, you know, they want to to be part of everything. But, um, and, you know, I think they understood that this was a short-term uh, sacrifice for a long-term gain. And I just got into a routine. So by the time I knew it, you know, I was, you know, the daily studying just became a habit for me. And it worked, you know, and I worked my personal life around that. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like for both you and Otto, right, really sticking to that routine, sticking to your study plan is, it was very helpful and helped you feel more confident and successful overall when you were putting everything together over the course of your studying. Mm -hmm. What resources did you incorporate into your studying? Review, you know, did you take a review course? practice exams. I know you mentioned using the review materials, um, but, you know, did you also do flashcards or, or anything else to help you? Yeah, I mean, I did all of the above. I did use Dalton Review. Um, I also used, uh, I actually also used sites like irs.gov or uh, the Medicare website. So anytime I would struggle with a concept that I, I you know, I just wasn't grasping through the material, I would actually use these, these um, authority sites to get more information. And they, I found, to be, found them to be very helpful. I did also use an, an audio program. So when I was walking my dog or, or in the car, I would listen to the audio program. Um, I also found it very helpful to write questions out. Like I would pose a question and then I would bullet point the answers as a, as a way for, for me to help retain the information. 
So, so it sounds like we have two votes so far for for writing the material for retention, um, and and that's really you know I think a great tip as well. Um, just you know to kind of write down, keep writing down the things, the concepts that you're learning to really help ingrain that into your brain. Right, and I also just I also want to just add in that I also created a cheat sheet, and it was about forty pages, but it it covered all the material that I thought was really um, pertinent to, to knowing for the exam. So I think creating a, a little cheat sheet can be very helpful and just reviewing it on a daily basis. That's great. Yeah, I think that's really helpful. So that way you have you know quick concepts ready to go. You don't have to flip through material um, over and over. You just have it right there. Right. Great. Well, I really appreciate your experience and your insight. Um, I think there are a couple questions that have come in for you as well, Michelle. I'm going to ask Matt some questions about his experience, and then we'll get back to answering some of the questions from our audience. Um, Matt, so I'll, I'll switch over to you now on your experience taking the CFP exam, obviously passing and becoming a CFP professional. What is your biggest study tip when studying for the CFP exam? Uh, well, thanks for having me here, and uh, thank you for uh, all these attendees for being here. Um, to give a little uh, heads up first, and then I'll dive into this question. I passed the CFP exam November 2015, so it's been a while for me, uh, but until recently, I was the CFP program director at the American College, and that's the uh, second largest CFP program in the country. So through uh, thousands of others, I've seen many different kinds of experiences, what has worked well, what has not worked very well. And so I can um, try to focus my uh, responses around that experience, living vicariously through others. I think Otto and Michelle have done a great job summarizing all of the different resources that are out there. And so uh, the, the answer to your question is, uh, you know, all of the above, right? Any of those things can work. What I think for anyone on this call should consider is what works for you and what works for one person might not work for you. And I've, I've seen, uh, I'm looking at the Q and A here and some folks are, are asking questions along the lines of like, what's better? Should I read a lot or should I do practice questions? And the answer is gonna come down to those individual differences for me it was due tons of practice questions. And uh, Dalton has a test bank, Kaplan has a test bank. Someone mentioned they're using Ken Zahn's review. Uh, Ken Zahn's questions are, in my opinion, harder than the actual CFP exam. So it depends, do you want a really difficult practice or something that's more representative of what you're gonna face? Other people are better off doing uh, what I heard Auto do of listening to the uh, recordings. Uh, both Auto and Michelle were writing many things down, which is something that I didn't do, but it depends on what's good for you. And we mentioned the timeline, how long until the exam. It's about 11 weeks from now. Most of these reviews recommend having a 10 week timeline. So this is really something you want to start doing very soon. And what I would suggest folks do start studying maybe now, maybe next week and see how it's going. Whatever strategies you're using, how is that going for you? When I started studying for myself, I was putting in two hours a day. I was doing a cursory review of the materials. I took my first practice exam. I got a 44% on that first practice exam, which told me what I was doing wasn't working. I switched things up to four hours a day, every single day for the remaining eight weeks I had until the exam. And I was using many different review materials, uh, which I can get into in more detail in a moment. That's great. So it sounds like, you know, you also had, you know, a combination of, of what Otto and Michelle were doing and have also have a lot of great insight into maybe what others have done as well from your previous experience. Um, but yeah, I mean, for sure, taking into account, right, what, what works for you best is going to be the, be the best answer always is, is great advice as well, right? Don't, don't stress about what other people may be doing because you're probably doing the same thing just in a different way. <laughs> um, did you face any challenges while you were studying for the exam, Matt? I, I think all of us did. <laughs> it's really, uh, it is a difficult exam. 
uh, it's maybe the hardest academic sort of thing that I ever had to do. Uh, and I was uh, in a PhD program, right? So uh, it, it is a tough thing and it's a tough hill to climb, which isn't meant to be discouraging. It's that, you know, all three of us here on the call have our CFPs and 93,000 other people also have theirs, but it is recognizing it is going to be very tough. I was uh, in some ways fortunate that uh, as a consultant at the time, I was able to manage my schedule uh, you know, at my discretion. And I just made the choice to not work for uh, a period of about a month so that I could focus on the exam you know, more than I was focusing on making money. For those people, uh, like Michelle mentioned, as a parent, I am really in awe of anyone who is raising a family, who has many work obligations. And I have seen folks waking up at four o'clock in the morning, uh, studying for a couple hours before the, the kids are awake, getting the kids fed and in school, going to their own jobs, coming back, um, raising the family again for a little bit, and then studying again at you know nine to 11 o'clock at night, going to bed and doing it all over. If that's you, you really do have a tough hill to climb. And all these tips that Otto and Michelle are giving you about time management, that's really going to be crucial. Many of our uh, financial advisor firms, then maybe if you're already working in one of those firms now, they also know how challenging this is and they're willing to work with you. So be upfront about that, say, this is the undertaking that uh, you're going through, and hopefully your employer is going to give you that grace and that flexibility to focus on this exam for the next couple months. Yeah, that's a great point. Definitely talking to everybody who's in your life, whether that's personal, professional, or other, just about you know what you're what you're doing for this period of time and making sure everyone understands those obligations. <laughs> How did you stay motivated to keep going and keep studying uh, through your study process? Something that I haven't heard yet from Otto and Michelle, and there's a question about this, the uh, study groups, the importance of the study groups. I had one myself. Uh, there were 11 of us in the group. 10 of the 11 of us passed on our first attempt. So if someone was asking like, you know, what's your opinion on study groups? I think they're incredible. If you use them productively, um, that can really keep your motivation up. Um, what we did is have a meeting in person every Wednesday, and we got together and reviewed that particular week's material. It's very easy to fall behind. It's very easy to neglect to study for a day or a few days in a row. If you have the accountability from the other members of your study group, you're more likely to stick with it and push through. Uh, and then surround yourself with other people who are motivated. They're there to help you understand the content. They're there to share resources. They're there as an emotional support. And as you're hearing all three of us say, this is a challenging time uh, up in front of you. So it's going to be stressful you're going to be frustrated. And having other people there saying, I'm going through the exact same thing you are, and I'm also stressed out, I'm also frustrated, at least for me and for many other people, that helps uh, get you through. You're not alone as you go through this. That's really helpful. Did you cap the number of people in your study group so that way you knew it was, you know, the people, you know, the most motivated people that you were connecting with, or was it kind of open to anybody who wanted to join? It was open. You know, we didn't cap, although I think that's a really good uh, suggestion. In my case, I went through the uh, UC Berkeley Extension program, which was already a fairly small program. Um, so it really was, you know, who wants in, you know, like, you know, and anyone who raised their hand is like, all right, welcome aboard. But if you're in a much larger firm or you're, you're in a larger, um, college, like say the American college, where it's like seven, 800 people every single year coming out of that program, then I think you, you raise a good point. Find those people who 
are the most motivated, the most um, competent, I guess, <laughs> and uh, surround yourself with those people. Yeah, that's great. And I know that, you know, I we have on the CFP board candidate forum, a number of candidates, you know, posting about starting a study group, whether that's virtual or in person. Um, so go check out the online community. But I'm sure like Matt mentioned, another great resource is your registered program, you know, where you took your coursework um, in order to prepare for the exam, or maybe you just had to take the capstone course. Um, but, you know, going back to that program director, that group of individuals that you went through the coursework with and you know, starting there is, is a great idea. Um, and Matt, what worked for you when you were putting together your study plan? I know it's been a few years since since taking the exam, but do you have any suggestions for an effective study plan or what to make sure you're adding to it or avoiding? Yeah, so uh, something, this is a good question because I meant to actually bring this up. So any of those review courses uh, that Otto and Michelle have mentioned and I, that I also see in these, uh, these questions here, they, to my knowledge, I think all have resources to help you plan your studying. One that I am familiar with, for example, is the Kaplan uh, program. They have a little tool where you can say, uh, when is my exam and what day is it today? And then it'll just automatically populate your calendar with this is what you need to study by this day. This is how much time you need to put in every single day. And then let's say you don't do something, you know, life gets in the way, now you have one less day, you pop right back into that tool, you subtract a day and it will repopulate your entire calendar. Uh, to my knowledge, that's the most uh, fleshed out schedule tool that any of these reviews have, uh, that Kaplan one. But uh, I think Otto was mentioning Dalton has a, a pretty robust tool as well. Uh, so the first thing I would do then is leverage the study program that you're using allow them to tell you what to do. And then uh, failing that, or if you're not having a lot of success with that tool, then uh, I think, you know, these other folks, Otto and Michelle have done a great job saying, you know, you, you make time when you can, you uh, try to give yourself the structure. Again, I'll, I'll lean back on what works for you as an individual, knowing that what I've seen works for the most people is putting the time on your calendar, creating that structure for yourself, and then sticking with it every single day. Yeah, and we heard Otto and Michelle say, right, it is for a period of time. It's a, it's a limited period of time that you're doing this study prep. And so, you know, just taking that into account, knowing, right, that this is going to be tough for this this period of time, but it'll the payoff in the end uh, is worth it because you get to the exam and you complete it. And so you know you're done with it at that point. <laughs> um, and Matt, what resources did you incorporate into your studying? I think that you've went over this a little bit, but you know, did you use, I know you said you used the uh, a review course, but did you also incorporate practice exams? Did you do flashcards, listen to audio, anything else? Another advantage of working in a study group is that if every member of the study group uses a different review course, you can then mix and match and use the best of each of those review courses. So, uh, you know, I probably don't want to be saying that in a live line, I guess, on a recorded line, but uh, I used like all of them. <laughs> so that was my own experience. Um, but uh, I think, you know, some people always ask, what's the best review course? And there is no best. Different review courses do certain things better than others. If you want to do the practice exams, for example, and you just want to grind through practice exams, my experience back in 2015 was the Kaplan program had the best review questions, and the Keir program had the best audiobook, and the, um, the Dalton program has the best uh, PowerPoints. Now that's seven years out of date, right? So I wouldn't necessarily take that to the bank or something. But it's if you're in one of these study groups and you can have everyone show off what they're using, find out what works best for you. What are you most interested in? What are you most engaged with? And use that. More than anything else, the most important thing is use these materials every single day. Stick with the program. Stick with the structure. 
don't worry so much about, you know, I'm at 95% of the best. Do, let me get to 100% of the best. No, no, no. You don't need to max it out. Stick with it every day. That's the most important thing. That's great advice. I think that's really helpful to keep into perspective. And like you mentioned, having a study group or other people that you can, you just even, even if it's not a formal study group, but other people you can say, hey, where are you at today or check in with, you know, um, you know, it is a great resource. So that way you can also see what they're doing, kind of where, where they're at, not necessarily comparing yourself, but just making sure that, you know, you, it's a little bit of an accountability thing. Um, so I think that's, that's really great advice. Um, also, just like you mentioned, keeping into perspective, you don't need to be 100% the best or, or what you're perceiving as the best in your studying, right? You just, like you said, keep, have your structure, stick with it, and you'll get there. Um, I want to um, just transition actually over to Kim really quickly. Kim, you are certified and you've taken the CFP exam and you've been listening in. Do you have anything to add based on your experience studying for the exam? That's a great, um, thank you for including me. I am nearing my 20th year from when I became a CFP professional. So um, it's all a blur at this point. However, um, I love though, some of the things I've heard here today, right? Being intentional, um, accountability. So, you know, that the, the piece that worked for Matt with the study group, that is not something that I took advantage of, and it's probably not something that would have worked for me. So I think really what I'm what I'm hearing from everyone is understanding your own learning style, what works for you, and not only just your own learning style, but when in the day is the best time for you to retain the information you're studying. Um, you know, two o'clock in the middle of the afternoon is not a time when I need to do something that requires a lot of mental energy, but 6 a.m. is a good time for that. So I think everybody needs to hone in on that. You know, I loved... Matt's response to, you know, questions that we're seeing in the Q&A about how much time does it take or what should I do? Again, it's really about, um, it. we don't know what you should do. Here's what we did. This worked for us. So that's, that's really what the point is today. But um, everybody agrees that this is a, a short-term sacrifice, even if you're taking the exam again. Um, for, for really what is a long-term um, fantastic reward. So I, I just know that uh, I plugged away every day. That's what I did and, and it worked for me, but that's, that's what I'm hearing from these other folks too, is just find a system, stick with it and keep doing it until you take that exam. That's really great. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you, you adding in your wisdom there as well. Otto, Michelle, and Matt, I just want to thank you so much. We're not quite at the end here, and we do have some questions we want to answer, which we'll get to shortly. But before we jump to questions, do any of you have any other advice, study tips, wisdom to impart on candidates who are preparing for the CFP exam? Well, if I can go first, um, I, I have posted some additional um, tips on the community page. Um, so if you go to the CFP board um, candidate open forum, um, last post is eight um, days ago. Um, there's a post from me and I have seven additional tips that I do um, recommend to others. Um, some I've already um, touched here, but definitely um, um, go over those. Um, I will, you know, one, Crucial thing is the following. If you're going to take a, a review course, make sure, you know, most review courses are going to have their, you know, their the dates for those um, review courses are going to be in October or late September. Make sure you read all the material they assign you before going into the review. The review is not the time for you to read the material. Be prepared. Read the material first. You can leave questions, uh, in my opinion, for October after the review, but make sure you read all the material before heading to the review. That's so crucial. It was one of my biggest mistakes on my first and my first try. Um, um, also, if you know if any of you are interested in having a mentor um, through the CFP mentor program for, for this cycle. I have two slots available for whoever wants any kind of help. Um, so just, you know, you can look for my profile online and just click on the um, on the link for to request me. So that's great, Otto. And, and yes, um, that's a great mention as well. We have the CFP board mentor program. 
um, that's help uh, that's intended to help individuals who are preparing for the exam specifically right now open for the November exam window. So um, like Otto mentioned, he's available as a mentor. So please feel free to connect with him. Uh, and then also using the community is a great resource. Otto has tips, Michelle has tips um, that they've posted on the on the forum based off of their experience. So please go and also use the online community and also connect with other candidates who are also studying for the exam. Uh, Michelle, anything, anything on your end, any other advice or study tips or anything to add on from what you've heard? Yeah, um, well, I also posted, like you said, I, I do have a post in the forum on some things that I did that were very helpful, including, um, but not limited to, you know, self-care, especially in the last few weeks, this it could be a really grueling process, um, physically, mentally. So, you know, I would say, you know, spend time just taking walks every day, eating properly, exercise, do all that stuff that, that you know uh, you should be doing anyway. But in the last few weeks, you really had to amp it up because it's really going to be helpful in, um, in, in just keeping you calm and, and focused in the last few weeks. Um, and I know someone had, had posed a question about my cheat sheet, and that's also in, in one of my posts in the forum. So you can visit that page and, and download it from there. Great. Thank you so much, Michelle. And Matt, any other tips or advice, anything else to add on? Uh, not in particular. I'm going through and uh, reading these questions uh, again. And it looks like, uh, Michelle, if you also happen to recall the name of your audio review, that seems to be a, a very popular question for folks. Oh, it was through Dalton. So they had their own separate audio review that you can purchase. And I think it was like a hundred dollars. Um, but you know, to me it was, it was well worth it. There you go. So to answer some of the other questions, then the Kier review that I said in my post or my response, I should say, was bought by Dalton in 2018. So there, there's your, uh, like I said, oops, I'm a little out of date, <laughs> but 2018 Kier was purchased by Dalton. And I've got a guess that the Dalton audiobook Michelle is talking about is the same audiobook that I used with Kier. So there, that answers about five or six questions all at once. Perfect. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Thank you, the three of you and Kim for such wonderful insights and sharing your personal experience. Uh, we do have some time for questions. So we'll go over to that. And Kim, I'll actually transition over to you for here for this slide. Oh, sure. Thank you, um, everyone. Uh, Amanda did a great job asking just the questions that I think everyone wanted to know. And of course, our panelists with um, being so forthcoming and, and transparent about their experience. So um, let's and, and thank to all of you really for, for your time and your great questions here. So let's look. I know that Matt went through a couple of the questions. Um, Amanda, if it's OK, I can start with, you know, just a couple of these. Let's see. Yes, of course. Um, one of the questions that did grab me that I think is valuable and I'm trying to find it now, but it was really about how did you identify the weaknesses that you had? Um, Sorry, I'm scrolling down to it now, but it was really about sticking to your to your nightly study schedule, but really knowing what do I need to spend my energy on. So I, I will ask any of you uh, to take this, but where what resources did you use to identify those weaknesses and what did you do with that going forward? Yeah, I mean, for me personally, it was it was the quizzes and the um, with Dalton, they give you like an initial exam. Um, and then midway through, they, they'll give you like another, just like a couple of, you know, a couple of different exams and they give you. And so based on that, it, it breaks it down and it tells you where you're performing well and where you're not performing so well. So I would tailor, as I got closer and closer to the exam, I would tailor uh, my focus based on those results. Perfect. Any other, any other advice from either of our other panelists? I will take that as a no then. Um, th another question here, and this is about timing too. So I know the question is posed is how early do you rec recommend starting to study for your exam? But there was another question I think pairs well with this, where really we're talking about timing, right? When I complete my education, 
then what's the timing between my ex my exam prep course and then taking the exam? So somebody could could help us understand that. That would be great. Uh, so I guess this that one gets back to um, I'd mentioned each of these reviews has uh, these different schedule tools. Um, generally, what I see recommended is ten weeks and out which would be one week from now, right? We're 11 weeks out, so 10 weeks would be next week. So that's to say, start very soon. Uh, and then in terms of when do you stop doing your reviews? And I think this uh, gets back to something Michelle recently said, uh, give yourself a, a few days rest before the actual exam. You know, usually what I've seen is take at least one, even better, two days off before the actual exam. Uh, so like, if you're applying that to yourself, that would say to start studying next week and stop studying sometime in the middle of November. Perfect, that's great. One one other thing kind of unrelated though, on Otto, when you were talking through um, your responses to Amanda's questions, you had mentioned a uh, test coach. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and, and um, in particular, did it help you with content or was it more about your psychological like your approach to the to the test sure it was uh, it was the latter um basically so for this to pass the cfp of course there's the knowledge aspect of it but there is also a mindset aspect to it right um and you know I think a lot of folks going to the exam, you know, like me the first time, you know, with a lot of knowledge, but then when the exam, you know, when you encounter the exam and you get questions that really throw you off, you start, you know, panicking or you start overthinking, you start getting nervous. So it is in your best interest to really get a game plan or a strategy that you write down, actually, I wrote mine down. And before I went into uh, Prometric, I read it um, again and again and again, just making sure that I was going to follow, you know, follow those protocols without deviating from them. So um, I hired a coach. Um, she, you know, she's great. She's um, on my post. Um, um, Basically, you know, she helped me with my mindset. She helped me with an approach to the exam. How do I address um, difficult questions? Um, how to evaluate each question that comes in, um, meaning that, you know, ones that you really want to take your time, ones that you, you know, take a little bit of time, and those that you really want to not take that much time. One of the main th problems that I had on my first try is that, you know, I took too long on some questions. Do not let a question hijack your exam, okay? Have the courage, have the decisiveness. If you don't know a question, you can put B as in boy, C as in cat, A as in apple, D as in David, whatever works for you and move on, okay? It's better for you to concentrate on the questions that you really know and take your, your you know, most of the time on those than others that, you know, you may not know anything about. Um, so that's, that's the approach that, um, you know, I took. Uh, I think that coaching helped me greatly. Um, so yeah, but by all means, you know, my, my coach, um, her name is, um, I forgot her name, sorry, Amy, Amy Lees. And she's a CFP, she's a financial planner. Um, um, and she is a great coach. There's other coaches out there, but it's definitely worth the money because of course it does have a cost, but if you don't want to get through this, go through this again, might as well make the investment now and make sure you don't. That's great information. And, and thank you. You addressed a couple of other questions here. I know that were really specific to the exam as far as pacing and um if you get hung up on a question like you said just be decisive enough to to make an answer and and go forward and it's my understanding you can mark those for review so you could come back to them um, if you have the time to do that right. um amanda how much time do we have left we have about five minutes so okay. probably one or two more questions 
there's there's one on here and i would ask everybody be concise but because we could all talk for hours on this one but why did you get your cfp certification why did you do this so if everybody could just um, try to summarize that in one or two sentences that would be lovely i can go first i was a career changer i was a psychologist and i got the awesome advice to get my cfp to jump start my career in financial planning and uh absolutely spot on it's the standard of excellence soon as i got the cfp as soon as i got the marks overnight my career took off perfect thank you michelle is our newest uh certificate what's your feeling on this yeah um with matt um i'm also you know, have a different you come from a different career and the people i work with are all cfp so that definitely had an influence um, and I just knew right away. I mean, I fell in love with the industry from the from day one, and I knew that I I wanted to do everything to just progress, not in just in this field, but with um with the, the you know to having this sort of the designation. Um, so yeah, that was kind of like how it happened for me. Perfect. Thank you, Otto. What about you? What was for your me, why for doing this? My, my biggest motivation is my little girl um, and, of course, my wife, my family. Um, I just um, knew that the CFP was is it, it is the golden standard for financial planning. I've been in the industry for some years in, in different, um, you know, doing different things. But I wanted to achieve the highest um, achievement in the industry and the gold standard, which was the CFP, in order to, you know, provide uh, better, you know, provide for my family. So absolutely. Yeah. I, I think for, for all, all of you that are taking the exam, you need to really ask the question, what is your, why, what, why are you doing this? Right. And, and really invoke that into your study and into your approach or mindset and, and go ahead and pass this, this thing. Yep, that's perfect. And I love that you mentioned your daughter. I was on a webinar recently um, where the the certificate was discussing he was doing this as a way to be an example. And it was not just to his family um, and his children, more specifically, but also to his colleagues. So that's one thing that you can take this experience back and share with those others at your firm. And then you suddenly become the mentor and you have the tenure and you have the experience. So um, I think with that, I would like to just um, thank everybody for attending today's webinar. Of course, a big thank you to Otto, Michelle and Matt for sharing their experiences, studying for the CFP exam. If you have any questions, um, please send them to get certified 2022 at cfpboard.org. Again, get certified 2022 at cfpboard.org. And additional resources will be available um, at the site referenced here. So cfp.net forward slash exam resources. Before we uh, close this out too, I would just add that if you haven't looked at the Q&A session, people have been making some great comments and mentioning some other resources. So I'd ask you to open up your Q&A and we'll keep this open for just a little while so you can scroll through. Um, Amanda, is there anything else that you wanted to add today? Thanks, Kim. And yes, one, just a big thank you to Otto, Michelle, and Matt from myself and from the organization. But also, um, the this will be, this is recorded. This has been recorded. So we will send out a recording to everybody who registered and we'll post it on our candidate forum. If you haven't logged in, um, you can, you know, you can still do so. You can access it through your account, but we'll make sure to send this out to everybody so you have it as a reference. Um, and then also, um, we I know that there are a number of questions that we haven't been able to get to and they're all really good questions so i'll make sure that i collect those and um we'll start asking those on the candidate forum as well so that way you know Otto, michelle matt maybe you guys can jump in but also just the whole uh candidate base who are who are preparing for the exam or maybe people who have recently passed can also jump in so we'll make sure that we try to get to all of those questions over the next um few days and weeks but again, if you have any questions, please send them to the email on your screen here and just appreciate everybody attending today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Good luck, everyone. Yes, thank you. Good luck, everyone.